Today we're talking about the Inflation Reduction Bill of 2022, a bill covering pretty much every American problem today except, ironically enough, inflation. Now this bill covers three primary problems that I can't wait to get to in future episodes. We got corporate minimum tax rates, funding green technologies, and of course enabling Medicare to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies. Today though, well I'm taking requests. Although no, I'm not deleting my channel. Now, A recent commenter suggested I do a whole video about the political shenanigans that led up to this bill getting passed. And I'm a huge sucker for some good shenanigans, so let's get right into it. Now, Depending on who you are, this story can be seen one of two ways. First, you got a guy who's so roguish that he eventually ends up being reliable. He's working with the Democrats. <gasps> no wait, the Republicans. <gasps> no wait, it was the Democrats the whole time. All right. Or second, this is the story of a guy who's just playing two parties against each other so he can pass a large environmental bill, political win, that at the same time doesn't do anything to punish oil, gas, or coal companies, and instead will provide his coal company with very lucrative tax credits for good behavior financial win. This thing, well, it's all carrots and no sticks. If it passes, we'll just put it this way, he's going to be Joe's second mansion. Now the shenanigans today really begins on July 14th when Joe Manchin said, all right, negotiations are over. Only passable iteration of this Build Back Better bill is going to be not building things or bringing things back. The only thing we got left is it's probably better than nothing. So at least a little bit of that Build Back Better brand still there. Bad and one for three will still get you on first base. Now this small mansion bill that he said he was willing to vote for was limited to only allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices with Big Pharma. People, well they were angry. Oh, the coal barons coming out against the environmental and tax hikes. <gasps> you don't say. Now, Joe Manchin cited two specific problems. First, inflation. He stated that he would be willing to reopen negotiations at the end of the summer when the new inflation numbers were coming in. And second, Mr. Manchin also insisted that spending be cut and that fossil fuels, coal, and gas and oil all be included in the subsidies and benefits. At this point, we had a bill that was going to allow Medicare to negotiate with drug companies, which was good, but nothing to really write home about. Everything seemed to be dead in the water. But in the background, no one was talking about it. Talks were continuing. For Schumer, a key to assuaging Manchin's concerns were policy sweeteners that boosted fossil fuel in coal-heavy West Virginia. Only green that this guy was rooting for was gash. Now while Schumer was sort of doing these secret negotiations for the passage of this bill by agreeing to pay fossil fuel companies to clean up their act a bit, Republicans were celebrating. Woo! No Build Back Better bill, except maybe that Medicare negotiation thing. We did it! Now over the next few weeks, oh, a whole bunch of smoke was pouring out a whole bunch of back rooms. To fully understand the aforementioned shenanigans that we're all looking forward to getting to, we gotta, well, kinda forget about Build Back Better or the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 for a second. Because this whole shenanigans thing revolves around another bill. You see, there was a separate quarter trillion dollar bill that Congress was debating designed to just back a dump truck of money into the driveways of big tech companies in order to pay them all of the money we could find to commit to domestically manufacturing their microchips. Now, I did make a comprehensive episode about the pros and cons of this bill. If you want to hear more about it, link in the description and I'll probably slap it in the comments and anywhere else I can get it out there. Anyways, Democrats really wanted this bill to pass, and Republicans were a bit split on it. Democrats needed 10 Republicans and every Democrat to vote for it, so Republicans had a bit of leverage with this thing on the table. Their position was, alright, we're going to use this chip bill as a hostage to prevent Democrats from using budget reconciliation to push through any sort of build back, inflation reduction, whatever you want to call it, spending bill. 
And now a Republican's perception of the situation was that, alright, now that Joe Bell Mansion is backed off, build back better, dead in the water. Joe Manchin abandoned talks until at least the end of summer, and when those talks come back, well, they're going to be just as doomed as the previous years of talks that we've already sat through. Now, because of that, they released the hostage. Boom! $280 billion to chip makers. Now go ahead and make us some made in America microchips. Bye bye, leverage. Now, of course, we all know that the perception of the situation they were seeing wasn't right. Now this is where we get deep into the shenanigans. You see, a few hours before that chips bill was passed, Schumer, Biden, and Manchin were all shaking hands on this bill successfully getting agreement amongst the three of them. This of course was the bill that Republicans were hoping to prevent passage of by continuing to refuse to pass that chips bill I just mentioned passing. Democrats surprised everyone by announcing that earlier deal with Manchin only after the chips bill had already been voted through the Senate. The hostage? Well, that was gone. Republicans suddenly had a lot less to withhold as leverage against a Democratic Party line vote. Still though, even with all that, this thing is not yet a done deal. First, some people are saying that Republicans now have a new hostage bill. Enter the Veteran Burn Pits Exposure Recognition Act. Now this whole debate is an episode on its own, but they seem to not want to vote on it anymore. Next you have the two and the one two punch of Senate's not getting anything done. Kristen Cinema, because we're not sure if she's on board yet. Manchin is turning his sales pitch to Cinema to 10, because well he's got a lot of money riding on this thing at this point. Now, Cinema has her own list of notes before she signs on to this thing, mostly related to reducing the severity of some proposed corporate taxes. We'll see how all that goes. And lastly, you got the Senate Parliamentarian, who still has to read any final reconciliation bill and confirm that everything in that bill is directly related to budget changes themselves as opposed to other sorts of regulations and things that aren't relevant towards funding. Why? Well, most bills on the Senate require 60 votes, which is 10 Republicans right now and all of the Democrats. This is why Republicans can block votes or hold them hostage. Now, Democrats are trying to push this environmental medical negotiation corporate tax bill through using special budget reconciliation strategies that allows the Senate to specifically make modifications to the budget with a simple 50 vote majority. Now, because you only need 50 votes to tweak the budget, even if it's a massive multi hundred billion dollar tweak. Democrats don't need Republicans to pass it, just all 50 Democratic Senators. So I look forward to summarizing this bill in a little more detail in the coming days. Until then, thank you for recommending this coverage, and lastly, thank you for watching. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put on my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.